So I'm going to talk about the mindset, the agenda, and the effectiveness of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. First, I want to talk about Martin Luther King and why his methods worked and why they didn't work and the pros and cons to having a mindset like this. The pros are is that nobody can call us criminals. No one can call us thugs. No one can make the word gangster synonymous with the word black or American Indian or African American or Negro or colored or all these other terms that have been labeled to us in the past. Nobody can make the image of myself look violent or thuggish if we adopt a mindset similar to Martin Luther King. If we are forgiving and persevering, there are no grounds in which we are inferior under unless your view of superiority is rooted in the subjugation of people, the skinning, scalping, robbing, looting, shooting, stabbing, burning, and enslaving and disease spreading of other people. If that's what constitutes your opinion of superiority, then let it be known that black people would be would not be inferior under any grounds other than this. Black people would have our own businesses, we would have our own neighborhoods, and we would have our own societies. And it wouldn't be better in terms of what white man constitutes as better. We would live in neighborhoods where we would have peace, harmony, happiness, togetherness, and we would also have a community where sometimes we don't get along. Sometimes we do get into fights. Sometimes we do have disagreements, just like with white people. Just like we would have gang members who gun each other down over a disagreement in black neighborhoods, we would still have white neighborhoods where there's extortion and where there are political crimes and where there are tax evasions, crimes against the entire constitution, where there are serial killings, where there are school shootings over bullying or a bad day or mental illness that hasn't been resolved or problems within the white household. There will still be a 70% suicide rate amongst white men. There's no one group that should be looked at as better than the other. And we all have our own strengths and we all have our own problems. And it's not always rooted in race. You can have a low IQ and be a white man. You can have a high IQ and be a white man. You can have a low IQ and be a black man. You can have a high IQ and be a black man. It's rooted in who you are, your experiences in life, and what you've gone through. It just so happens that the experiences in life for most black people and what they've gone through have left them at a disadvantageous position. But nonetheless, regardless of the identity stripping and the tribal stripping and the language stripping and the nation stripping, black people, if they decide to be persevering and not be violent towards white people, there's nothing that white people can do to paint a negative image. Now the cons is what they can do. And that is look at white and look at black people standing for the bull and utilizing that as an opportunity to take advantage of them and be scavengers, which is what historically has been the case. Wherever you see peaceful brown people, and I'm not talking about natives that killed each other before the white men came. I'm talking about the brown people that white people first encountered that were peaceful to them and that taught them how to hunt and taught them how to crop, taught them how to fish, taught them how to survive, take, took care of their kids, taught them their languages. Those brown people, if you look at the journals of Europeans, they looked at these people as docile and innocent and grounds for perfection of being taken advantage of. This has historically been the problem with being peaceful. 
If you look at the Taino, the Lucayano, the Arawak, these were the first Native Americans that Europeans ever encountered. And they weren't the Comanche or other tribes that were going out and conquering other tribes. This specific tribe was peaceful. Everyone tries to group natives into this one group. This tribe that natives encounter that, that whites encountered were peaceful, yet they were taken advantage of. Whenever black uh, enslaved people were peaceful uh, to the white men that owned them, they were taken advantage of. So with this being said, whenever you are overtly nice to your enemy and you don't have a means of committing harm against them in self-defense, I don't mean indiscriminately going out and committing uh, violence against white people, but I mean if a white man steps on your toe, you should be able to step on it back. If you don't have the means to enforce a way to stand up for yourself, you leave the environment of peace in the hands of your oppressor. And it is only up to their mercy or lack thereof to dictate the outcome. So you leave yourself in a vulnerable position. Like Martin Luther King said, he had a dream. But that dream can turn reality for most black people into a nightmare. But we need half of our black people like that because it shows not every black person is militant. With Malcolm X, he was living in reality while Malcolm, while Martin Luther King had a dream. The pros are is that it teaches us to be strong. It teaches us to be independent. It teaches us that we don't have to rely on living with white people and living off their system and living um, off of white people in general, being dependent on them because then they can do whatever they want with your land, with your property, with your water. It teaches us that we that there's enough of us to look out for each other. So those are the prawns with Malcolm X. It teaches us that we can be self-reliant, self-governing, have our own neighborhoods the way Chinese people have their own neighborhoods and stick together, have our own neighborhoods the same way Hispanics have their own neighborhoods and for the most part stick together, have our own neighborhoods the same way Jews have their own neighborhoods and stick together, the same way people from India have their own neighborhoods and stick together, Pakistan, Guatemala, Ecuador, uh, Colombia, Puerto Rico, uh, Arab communities, people from Morocco, you know, all these people have their own communities and there's not a problem. But whenever black people want to have our own communities, there's the problem of segregation. People think that we're trying to segregate and it's just we want our ability to be able to look after ourselves. And this is what Malcolm X pretty much um, was saying. Now, the problem is whenever you say something along the lines of if we are attacked, we should be able to attack back. Your words will be isolated and cherry picked and pushed as a narrative to say, look at what he just said. He's advocating for violence against white people. When in reality, all we're really saying is an eye for an eye. If you hit us, we should hit you. The same way if a black man goes out and indiscriminately targets a white girl, wouldn't you want to be well within your constitutional and morally humane rights to protect your daughter? It's the same exact thing when white men were going to black churches and bombing them that we want the ability to defend ourselves. And that's all Malcolm X was saying. So who was right and who was wrong? Ultimately, neither one was wrong. They were both right in their own way. We need that dichotomy. We need a wide variety of black people so that white people cannot group us into one group saying, oh, look at how docile they all are. Let's take advantage. You have some that are militant. And just as you have some that are militant, white people can't only point to those who are militant and say, well, look, look at how they all act. They're all thugs and they all carry guns and they all think that they should just uh, attack white people. No, because you had black people who were doing peaceful marches. So that dichotomy ultimately is what led to the civil rights movement having some degree of success. Let me know what you guys think. Who was right in your opinion? Who was more right? And uh, who do you have the most ideologies in common with.